feel like I have a really interesting and varied life. Daily, I do some writing at the computer, and I'm the author of a book called Right Use of Power, The Heart of Ethics, which I teach. Then I also am the owner of a house. I'm the one who has to take care of everything that breaks. Do all the gardening, and which I love. That's like my art. I'm 72 years old, and I'm trying to move a, into a little more, a little softer, more graceful life. Well, I really want to be able to prevent getting this stoop that I notice is start, starting to happen in my shoulders and neck that I see in a lot of older people and I see in pictures of myself and it's shocking to look at it. And I just want to find out how to move in a different way so that that self-corrects and doesn't, doesn't increase. How are you doing with what we've been doing so far? Well, it's really interesting. I went for a walk uh, this, this morning or yesterday, mm -hmm. and I could, the thing, the clues that were the most important was that imagining this, like, pole between here and back here, uh -huh. rather than thinking I was supposed to move my, head, my shoulders back. And that made quite a difference. And then I could begin, when I was working from up here, I could begin to feel my legs uh, moving more at the psoas mm -hmm. and less effortfully yeah. down there. Don't think of it so much of as a pole because that's sort of rigid, but just as an extension uh -huh. so that you're getting longer between the back mm, of your right. sternum and the front of your sacrum. Okay. But yeah. it, the idea was connecting these two, uh -huh. which made it made a... Well, it was an orient, special orientation. Mm -hmm. And the walking felt? Easier. Uh, easier. Uh -huh. Smoother. Okay, that's your motto. Easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I'd like to work today a little more with your arms and shoulders. Okay. And then let's do some application to how you do things in your office. And oh, yeah, yeah. That'd stuff like that. So let's start by just checking in with your breath and seeing how that's going. I'm going to get a little support for you. Hold on. So here I'm seeing her head resting back. And I want to have a... So her ears on her coronal midline. Does that feel more comfortable? Yes. Okay. So, exploring that. And remember the head response. Mm -hmm. All right. Letting the head respond to the breath. Which reminds me of the hookup down here. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. So we started on our first session working a little bit with my hands under your back. Mm -hmm. And I want to just come back to that again. Yeah. So right here is where your ribs connect to your spine. Mm -hmm. And just let your breath come here. Um, why don't you put one hand on your chest? Yeah, up a little higher. And then with that hand, just sort of guide your consciousness towards your back. You don't have to restrict your breath, but just kind of give your message. That's it. Now I feel you. Good. All right. And now feel that widening. And this is what's going to give your place a sh your shoulder a place to rest. Yeah. And then continue the feeling of widening. So you feel your shoulder responding to your breath. That's good. So this is review. Yeah. How are you doing with that? It's a review going up. Pardon me? <laughs> Pardon? I didn't I didn't have it consciously remembered this piece. Okay. You sure we did it? I did it. But <laughs> when I've been practicing walking, I haven't yeah. remembered it. So just be aware now of the shoulder responding to the breath. So you feel a little movement there. Uh -huh. So the head needs to respond to the breath and also the yeah. shoulders, or else we shut ourselves down here in the upper body. Yeah. We're trying to get that. Huh? Watching the class video this morning and seeing your swamp creature. <laughs> Get a little more movement in the upper body here. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. 
breathe right into my hands. Okay. So now I'd like to work with you a little bit on how your shoulder and arm relate when you're reaching or just doing anything in front of you. So a lot of times people are lifting the shoulder with the arm when they reach and that would put you into the pattern that you are wanting to leave behind here. Mm -hmm. So look now, we're going to just let the sh scapula, the shoulder blade, mm -hmm. drop mm -hmm. as the arm comes up yeah. rather than going with the arm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a counter movement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like the old garage door openers yeah, yeah, yeah. where you lift the garage door and then what makes it go up is the weight going yes, down inside yes, the yes. garage. Yes, right. Okay. 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 So arm goes up, shoulder blade goes down. And actually what we're looking here is a balance between the latissimus dorsi here in the back mm -hmm. and the pectoralis muscles here in the front. So let's play with that a moment. Mm -hmm. So here's the spine of your scapula. And this is going to go down your back as your arm comes up. And I'm going to have you swing your arm up just to be vertical over, over your shoulder joint. And let the scapula drop back. Good. Good. Good, good. And then... Find balance point for your arm. All right. And I'm going to do something a little different. <laughs> so now just let the arm drop. Good. And let's try that again. This time, be don't effort so much right here. Just let it happen. Swing the arm up and let the scapula go down. So it's not a big job. You don't have to work at it. Yeah, good. Such a theme. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Right. Work hard. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm finding balance point again. So let's play with this a little. So balance point is the lightest place. If you go this way, it's a little heavier. Yeah. If you go this way, it's a little heavier. Yeah. And even if you come out toward me, oh yeah, or you go too far across. Yeah. yeah. So finding that lightest place, yeah. we almost feel like your arm could just hang there. You yeah. wouldn't have to do it. And now let's play with micro movements for the hand. And what I'm up to here is to just relax the arm enough that the shoulder will drop back. So as we soften the hand, uh -huh. fingers, palmar fascia, wrist bones. Yeah. And feel like the weight of the arm just drops down into your into the table a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I just was refining your balance point there. And I'm, what I'm feeling in my hand under your shoulder is you're beginning to get a little heavier. Just exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah. And this is something you can play with on your own. Sure. Yeah, I do this almost every day. Do you? Yeah, part of my yoga practice. I just relax my arms and hands and especially after I don't know if you're still are you still doing massage so yeah do you do a massage this is really nice to relax the hands mm -hmm. okay how's that feeling so now we're going to play with just feeling the exact moment that gravity takes hold of your arm and then let it go let it fall like a tree in the forest okay here we go tilt and let go. Good. Some people have a hard time with that, but you oh. do that very well. <laughs> Good. Yeah, so now just take a breath into the shoulder again. Feel its response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you feel the difference between your two sides? Yeah, this one feels like it's curved forward. And then this one's resting back, which is what yeah. we're, what we're uh -huh. wanting for you there. Good. So let's go with the other side. I'm going to begin in here. Just. Yeah. yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Okay. You got some pretty gnarly stuff right there. Don't you? <laughs> okay. So now, just breathing into my fingers. See if you can find your back a little bit. You went away from me here. Find it. Take your breath right. Yeah. Put your right hand on your chest. Yeah. And just with your hand guide your awareness to my my fingers. 
That's it. Good. And just feel that feel that little movement there where the ribs open up from the spine. Yeah. Good. That's important stuff. And now you're going to feel that widening go all the way across and under the shoulder. And then see if you can let the shoulder drop back into that space. Yeah, good. Yeah, there it went. Did you feel it? Yeah. Okay. And now just a few more breaths, feeling the shoulder respond to the breath. That's good. And just breathe right into my hands. So now let's do the arm lift again. Same idea. We're going to let the we're going to let the uh, shoulder blades slide down the back as the arms. And easy, just easy. You don't have to like do it. You just allow it. Okay. And swinging the arm up. Good. And feel how that last bit how it really drops down as the arm comes up. And now finding balance point for this arm. A little wide. Try coming a little more toward the middle. That's it. There you go. Feel it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And play back a little bit this way and see if you find the lightest place. Headward, footward. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, you tended to be a little bit out toward me. Just, we're talking tiny now. And now, should we play with micro movements on this hand? A bit more like seaweed rippling. Yeah, soft. That's good. Yeah, let the wrist move a little too. Mm -hmm. That's good. A little less doing and a little more allowing. <laughs> yeah. What a mantra. Right, okay. That's softer, yeah. Good. So you're, you're, in, um, yeah, you're in the vertical. That's softer, good. And now I'm feeling your weight dropping. Dropping, I can feel the show. Yeah, there you go. Now I'm going to just touch this and you let it fall. The minute you feel gravity, take it. Ah, ah, it's got it. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Call it gravity. <laughs> right, try it again. Wait, wait, see, take a little time. <laughs> You're in a hurry. <laughs> so, Such a metaphor, to, isn't it? Pardon? It's such a metaphor. I know, this, I know. For how we live our lives. Yeah, okay. So here's your latissimus dorsi back here. Mm -hmm. And part of what happens, look over here for a second. When this happens, the pectoralis here is doing all the work. Yeah. And when we start to activate the down drop mm -hmm. of the scapula, the down glide, this goes to work uh -huh. here. Mm -hmm. And then we have what we're always looking for, a front back balance, uh -huh. instead of everything in front. Uh -huh. Just having... So almost, let's see, I want to awaken your latissimus dorsi a minute. Okay. So you're going to do a tiny little inch long slide along your leg. Feel that wake up right in here? Sort of. Sort of. It's small. It's not going to be seen from the last row in the balcony. Okay. <laughs> and then just let that go again. And again, just a little down, reach down. Yeah. yeah, now you got it. Okay. Good. So you're going to start. Let's, let's initiate the arm lift that way. Just a tiny little reach and then swing up and let the scapula glide down the back and find your lightest place. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and then see what can happen with the hand. So everything's softening a little bit now, Cedar. That's good. Yeah. 
Feel much softer your hand is now. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. This is easier. <laughs> this is so easier. So I think part of what may be helpful you in your whole effort to live easier is to have a little more awareness of initiation of movement. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you kind of ram into it. Mm -hmm. And then when you took a little more time here, then your mm -hmm. arm came out much more relaxed and your hand is more relaxed. Mm -hmm. So the, initiate, the moment of initiation can be the moment when you are shifting from one pattern to another. Mm -hmm. So let's just say your old pattern is, okay, charge through. Mm -hmm. and Get it done. Get it done. And so then at that moment of initiation, you could go, well, how can I do this easily? This is your mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. And then you begin just a little differently and it will change mm -hmm. the whole quality. Mm -hmm. Just like your hand is moving really differently mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So now let's see it drop. See if you can let, feel the moment gravity takes it and then just let it go. Takes a minute there. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> try that one more time. Here we go. Think of it. Now we're going to just start with a little gentle initiation, awakening the lats, and then swing up. Yeah. Good. And now just this time, you just let it drop. Feel that moment. Much better. Yeah. Did you feel the difference? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that time you let go right away. Yeah. So how about both arms at once? So find your latissimus, okay. so you just that little reach, and yeah. then swinging the arms up, and the down glide of the scapula, and then find the lightest place for both arms. Yeah, they're a little wide. See what you, if you can feel if they get a little lighter when you cut there. It's interesting, you can just feel it. <laughs> Again, okay. And now play with both hands at once. Just letting them be as soft and liquid. You're looking at, this is, you know, our fingers can get so stiff with all the things we do, and especially typing on computer keys. So we just try and let them become fronds of seaweed. Little soft things. Okay. So now I want to play with just having you tune in to how weight shift changes everything in the body. So I'm going to just take your hands and shift them forward a little and just see if you can feel the response all the way through your front line. Yeah? So when you shift the weight, the whole body responds. And it's come this way. And we're coming off of the gravity point. Yeah. And then you find lightest place and everything settles a little differently. So that's just kind of a model of how it affects us when we're standing and we're doing anything. When we're, in, when we're in our lightest place, everything is one way, and when we shift out of it into gravity one way or the other, then it changes. Okay, now let both arms drop. That's very good now. When they drops with what I call a resonant plop, <laughs> where they bounce a little. Uh -huh. Sometimes get too excited and throw it, and uh -huh. then it doesn't make a resonant plop. Okay. All right. Let's take this into sitting. Okay. You want to roll toward me? Now remember, gravity's doing this. Oh, yes, yes. All right. The queen of initiation <laughs> sitting up. Straight. Gravity's coming straight down. So in order to move comfortably or harmoniously with gravity, we want to cut through the fields of gravity when we go to lift something, like our body in this case, or a heavy object. So just roll toward me. Dropping your legs toward the floor. And just up this way. And you don't have that moment of strain. How's it feeling? Good. Yeah. Your shoulders are resting back. I could more. save the world. <laughs> Pardon me? I could save the world. <laughs> could save the world. <laughs> okay. All right. So, first of all, I'd like you to just feel your breath in the back again here. Just feel that expanding and contracting. Yeah. Nice. Feel it on me. Yeah. So a lot of your
your breath can happen there. Yeah, that's good. So now I want to play with how you do things sitting. I'm thinking of you primarily at your desk, Yeah. but there's other ways that we sit. You know, we sit to eat too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I still am fussing a little bit with getting the perfect height. So what we want when we're sitting is just a slight bit higher at the hip than the knee. Mm. And that encourages us to sit on the front of our sacrum, mm -hmm. on the front of our sit bones. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's very important when we sit that we have if we want to be in balance point, that we have as much weight coming through the front line as the back line. Mm -hmm. And what I saw, I was looking at the video of your interview, is that you had most of your weight going through the back line. Mm -hmm. Does that feel familiar? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the same thing we were working on with getting mm -hmm. a little bit more length right. here. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's so the now. line that connects here with here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, think about your sit bones like this. And we want to be, they're curved like this. And your habit is to sit on the back of them. And what you want to do is actually be sitting a little bit toward the front of them. So a little bit more forward, a little more. Yeah. OK, let's actually play with some pelvic movement here. So you're going to turn your tail under. Yeah. Yeah. And then notice that we're talking about congruency here. So notice that when your tail is turned under, where the rest of you wants to go is into a C-curve. Okay, so just allow yourself to do that. Head to. <laughs> yeah. And now slowly shift your weight forward on your sit bones. And keep coming forward and keep coming forward. We're going to go to the other extreme. And then notice that when you get in this position, you can actually find congruence more like that. You look. See if you can lift your chest as high as you can. Yeah, so you're almost arching. Yeah, and so in this situation, your midsection is now in f in the most forward point. And if you go back to the other one, just roll yourself back. Call this arcing. Yeah, and it's just your spine, not your shoulders. Yeah, roll yourself back, and now your midsection is the furthest behind you. And so what we're looking for is a place where the midsection is in the middle midsection. So coming up again. And for you, I'm going to have you go to the arched extreme before you come to center, because you're so happy in that other one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lift here. Yeah. Right. And this actually is a good stretch for you when you've been uh -huh. sitting a while. Now, let the midsection come back towards center. And right about there is where it is. How are you doing there? Does that, mm. feel, does that feel weird? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Your kinesthetic sense has been just blown mm -hmm. <laughs> from its habitual thing. So play with your head in relationship to that. Just wiggle around. Some micro movements at the neck like we've been doing. And just see where the head wants to be when this is in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try and find that. So how are you doing there? Besides feeling weird, is it comfortable or something bogging? Yeah. No. Okay. A little pain right back here. So but a little bit. That's usual. Yeah. So that happens even if you're in the other position? No. No. Okay. Let's take you back to half an inch. Yeah. Is that better? Does that be that? Yeah. Okay, so I had you just a touch too far. Okay. Okay, so let's find this spot again. Because the idea is I want you to be able to find this when I'm not here. Of course. <laughs> I can always be there. So let's go back to the C curve. Roll way under. Let your head hang. And this is congruent. This is actually where your body wants to go when your pelvis is here. Mm -hmm. However, then if your pelvis is there and your computer's up here, what happens? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <Not Right. here. laughs> so Creature now from we're the rolling smile. in the opposite direction. Here we go. Rolling forward. Rolling, making it. And let that let that lift come right up through your front line and give yourself a stretch here now. Even a little more forward on your sit bones. Yeah. And now from here, see if you can find middle. 
and you want to find where middle is where it isn't going to tweak you in the in the tailbone there that's it that looks about right does that feel good mm -hmm. cool so you think you can find that on your own now i don't know you want to try it again by yourself without my okay. hands get this here mm -hmm. this is what i'm going to find again okay be sure that the shoulders do not get into the act. It's just about your spine. Yeah. And then. And really exaggerate this one. This is a good stretch for you because it's the opposite of your pattern. Yeah. And then finding the middle. How's that feel? I think that's it. Is that that it? looks very nice. Okay. And one of the ways that I can tell is if now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do next is introduce a hinge between your two hip bones. So you, you remember the hip joint is a mm -hmm. ball and socket, and those two spots are right here. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I'm gonna ask you to keep all of this in alignment and I'm just gonna tilt you forward and back a little bit right at that hinge. Good, 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 yeah. And so as I tilt you forward and back, I'm gonna find the lightest place just like we did with the arm. Same process. Good. How does that feel? Not so weird. Not so weird, getting a little more food. Yeah. 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 Is it feeling comfortable? Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that happens is that our old patterns are comfortingly familiar, mm -hmm. but not necessarily physically mm -hmm. comfortable. And so yeah. when you're in your lightest place, you're basically having the least strain in your body. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then trying to imagine doing my computer. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, first I want you to find this. One piece at a time. One piece at a time. But So that feels like you could find that on your own? Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to this hinge. So your computer's in front of you. Mm -hmm. What happens, what I saw in the video, mm -hmm. is that when you tend to go forward, you go forward this way. Mm -hmm. So you're dropping at the midsection. Mm -hmm. So now I want to show you another way of going forward mm -hmm. where you keep all this length. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of keeping length in your body when you're doing anything is it's less tiring. Mm -hmm. You know how when we, when mm -hmm. we, um, when we're tired, we, get, we stretch, and we're trying to get the length back. Mm -hmm. And so keeping the length as we work is just much more easy, easy on your gut, mm -hmm. easy on, your, on mm -hmm. all your inner organs mm -hmm. than if you go here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just rock like this around that hinge. Okay, and just look at the whole picture here for a minute because my head is, two or three things are happening immediately as I go into this. One of them is I'm putting my feet in a rocker place so one foot's back and one foot forward because as I go forward I want to be sure and have support for that weight going forward. If I don't have support there's no way I can do that. I'll fall on my nose. Okay so so that's one thing. The other thing that's happening is I'm keeping all of this in alignment and the third thing that's happening is my head's responding. Just as we were talking about your head responding mm -hmm. to your breath. Mm -hmm. Okay so if I try and go forward and leave my head behind, again, I'm introducing stress here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna have you start now rocking at this hinge mm -hmm. and coming back. And as you walk, feel that the forward foot takes a little bit of weight. And actually, uh, there. yeah, okay. And when you come back, just come back to balance point. Don't come behind it. Okay, that's good. So one of the ways you can keep yourself from collapsing is when you find your balance point and you find your length, put one hand on your chest and one on your abdomen. And if you start to collapse, your hands will come closer together. <laughs> play with that. <laughs> yeah. So you want to keep... Just play, keep them there for a moment as you do this rocking forward and just keep them the same length apart. They're not gonna get closer. That's it, good. Okay. 
So just imagine that we're putting a WD-40 here, <laughs> that you're going to make that hinge very well oiled and fluid, because that's the hinge you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have another one too, but let's get this one. Mm -hmm. Be sure those hands aren't creeping closer. And come back to balance point now and just see if you have your full length. Pretty good. Okay. So now the other piece is up here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little head nod. Maybe I should be on this side, huh? Yeah, yeah. we're going to do a little head nod. And for that, you're going to, um, wait a sec, may I guide you again? Yes. Rather than jumping in here. Let me bring your chin up again a little bit. So imagine, here's your head bone, and here's the top of your neck. You're going to just lift your occiput, this occipital bone, off your top of your neck. And as you do that, can you feel how that lengthens your spine a little mm -hmm. bit? Yeah. So you're going to begin any head movement right here rather than lower. Mm -hmm. Look at me for a sec. So if I do that here, it lengthens me. If I do it even a little lower, it tends to take me right into that pattern. So this is an important piece for, mm -hmm. your, for your pattern. Just let this come up. And feel the lengthening right down to your tailbone. And so now play with that a little. Mm -hmm. How's that feeling? I'm a little jerky. Pardon me? I'm a little jerky. Yeah, so that may be, I think that is not a joint you've been using much. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so, so coming back to the micro movements mm -hmm. that we did in your first mm -hmm. session, that's waking up this joint too. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing for you to play with at times. Okay, now where we're going, remember I said there were three things. One was we're moving from here, one we're having support from the feet, and the other said the head responds. So here you are on balance point. And it's just like your head is just going to bobble off. When you go forward, it's just going to tilt a little. Just a little. So that you're not holding it back against your forward movement. So rock forward and let your head tilt at the same time. And this, is, this was kind of a hard coordination for me to get when I first started learning. So it can be difficult to find that. It's a, it means a very easy neck. Yeah. So now, as you initiate the movement at the hips, the head immediately responds. Yeah. And you don't need to go quite so far. Just a little nod. Good. That's it. Okay. All right. Now your computer screen is here. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to go too low because you've got to see that, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming. I mean, one of the things that would be good is if I could actually come to your office and see how your setup is, but ideally you want that screen right in front of your eyes and not lower or higher. Mm -hmm. How is it for you? You have, a, you have a, a laptop, huh? Yeah, oh, it's much lower. Uh-huh. Then it, if it were up here, it would have to be this much higher. Uh -huh. Do you have a separate keyboard? Uh, no. So that might be a good idea to, then you could put your laptop you know, I know that sometimes you're carrying it around with you, but when you're in your office, you put it up where it's in front of your eyes, and then you have a separate keyboard down here mm -hmm. so that you're not trying to... This is... It's all too close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let's let's look at that further. So, mm -hmm. so now, you're going to go to meet the keyboard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gently and with awareness. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to rock forward slightly and lay your hands on the keyboard. Okay, oops, let's have the keyboard be right here. You're gonna, so you, you want to keep your elbow by your side. If you get out here, look what happens to the shoulders. And there you are in your pattern again. So elbows are by your side, and you want the keyboard close enough. And you're going to lean a little bit forward or vertical. Okay? And now play with the dexterity of your fingers in this position. Yeah. And then let's go back to your old familiar position where you're behind yourself. And then you're putting your arms out a little further and feel how your fingers have less dexterity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So coming forward. 
Yeah. How does that feel? That's good. Hmm. Explore your breath for a minute. Yeah. And sometimes maybe you're writing and you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you think, take your eyes off, take a breath, let your head respond to the breath, mm -hmm. let everything soften. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have another book coming or <laughs> working on anything right now? <laughs> oh, a, a, a talk I'm giving next weekend. Okay, so you got something to work on. Mm -hmm. Not that's not a problem for you. <laughs> okay. No, no problem. <laughs> All right, so let's try this again. Rock forward a little bit forward or vertical. That front foot's going to hold your weight. And then fingers on the keyboard, elbows by the side. You have lead weights in your elbows, and that's going to allow this to rest down. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How you doing? Well, this would be lovely. I know it would be easier. Mm -hmm. And I am in such an altered state when I'm at my computer. Uh -huh. It's going to be challenging to... Yeah, to change your pattern. Yeah, to be conscious. Yeah. So what I would recommend is that when you start, first of all, let's, let me come over and we'll get your setup. Mm -hmm. Really mm -hmm. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, I think that's really important for people with laptops, that they have a separate keyboard from when they're not carrying the thing mm -hmm. around. Because the whole thing is too close together mm -hmm. and there's just no way to mm -hmm. avoid that. So uh, I would put that on mm -hmm. your agenda to get a separate keyboard. Mm -hmm. And when you have it, then let me come over and help mm -hmm. you get it all set up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So in the meantime, doing the best you can with this. So you're, if you can put your, your hands uh, not too high, mm -hmm. then you may have to bend your head a little bit mm -hmm. to see the screen. But, mm -hmm. um, so you begin with awareness. Mm -hmm. and then you go to work and you probably... Lose find awareness. You, you probably <laughs> find yourself back here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then no blame, no shame. You yeah. just take a break, yeah. take a breath, straighten mm -hmm. up. And so many times during mm -hmm. your process, I mean, you should yeah. see me. I when, After I had my knee surgery, I was keeping my foot up on the file cabinet. Yeah in order to, you know, yeah. and I'm still doing that. I'll be working away, and all of a sudden I find my foot's up there. It's terrible. I'm way over on this side. So then you go, oh, what am I doing? And you come back. They, take yeah. it, says it, say, they say it takes 17 repetitions At to least. get yeah. a new pattern. Yeah. So, At least. Yeah. So you just keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Does that feel clear now? Imagine now that you're sitting at the table mm -hmm. and the salt is over here and you want some. Mm -hmm. How will you reach for it? But it's over here. What are you going to do? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So general principle. The scapula stay on the back all the time unless we have a real need. So this is our extension. Like if I have to reach something really high and I'm on my toes and I still can't reach it, that's it. Okay, but a lot of times we live literally overextended, <laughs> extending ourselves when we don't need to. So the other thing to think about is you, your arms, everything that you do with your hands and arms comes out of your heart chakra. Mm -hmm. So you wanna put your heart where your hand is. Mm -hmm. So if I, the salt is over here, you lean for it. Yeah, and let that hand slide so you don't twist. Yeah, and now you can get it, okay? Or something is way over here. What are you gonna do? Yeah, good. And how about the head response? So that the head doesn't get left behind. Yes, so you keep your spine long because the minute you leave your head behind, that shortens you. Yeah, that's good, that's good, okay. So, you may be at your desk reaching for the phone. Same thing. Mm -hmm. So you got your computer right here, right in front of you, but there's, you need a paper that's over there. So if the paper's over there, and I'm sitting here like this, I have to reach that way, eh, I'm gonna fall into space. So let's put that foot out mm -hmm. to support it. So pretend you've got a paper over here that you wanna get from your desk. So get this leg moving to support you. 
Right. Okay. Or the phone's ringing over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How's that feeling? A, a little tentative. But... Yeah, try it again. Paper's over here. Yeah. So wherever you go, think heart goes where your hand goes, and you need support. Yeah. Because as soon as you take your thorax off by itself, it all starts hanging off your low back. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Okay. This would be all feeling clear? Yeah. Let's do one more piece. Okay. So to come to standing, <laughs> this is what we call the rocker principle. One foot forward, one foot back. And we're going to just do all the same things we just did. We're going to rock and let the head respond, and then we're going to push with the back foot. Come on. This is like finishing school. Yes. That's <laughs> so graceful. <laughs> okay, so just, you're going to actually lead through your crown. No, let your head go. No, there. There. Okay, now go. Yeah. Right. And, sit, and when you go to sit down, same thing. If you, you carry your weight here, you have lots of control. If the chair is not quite where you think it is, you're not going to fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so come to standing again. Yeah. And now let's pretend I saw you working at your desk standing also. Let's, mm -hmm. let's make this into a desk. So, now, uh, what are you doing there? Oh, I'm, I'm uh, writing a, a letter, I'm picking up some stamps, uh, weighing the letter to see how many stamps. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm, answering the phone. I'm, mm -hmm. well, one thing you're doing right now is you show me this that's working very well is that you're shifting your weight from the uh -huh. from your feet. So be even more conscious of that. Uh -huh. So phone's over there. Uh -huh. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So if you're reaching straight forward, I would suggest if our feet are exactly side by side, there's a tendency to... Mm -hmm. So just the one foot, tiny bit, foot length behind mm -hmm. the other. So now if I want to reach something over here, mm -hmm. I've got, try, try putting one foot just a little behind the other. And now let that back heel lift up a little bit. So you push mm -hmm. a little with your toe hinge. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So you're rocking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes, you're going to let your head respond a little bit. So mm -hmm. you're not pulling back. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And this same rocker applies, I saw you in your garden, Yeah. you know, here you are cutting a bush. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> so here's the bush. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I stand here with my feet together and reach for the bush, yeah. the weight of my thorax is hanging off my low back. Mm -hmm. But if I take a step toward the bush, now mm -hmm. the weight of my thorax is supported by mm -hmm. this foot, and mm -hmm. I am not straining in the same way. Try that. The bush. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so you're gonna, yeah, step forward and then lean over like you're. Try even keeping that front leg a little straighter, unless you need to get down low. Yeah, and just chip, clip your bush. Yeah, and if you let this heel come up a little bit. You um, see how oh, that, yeah. yeah. And say that it's tough and you want some weight behind it, push with that toe hinge and put the whole weight of your mm -hmm. body behind your clippers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And chopping vegetables, same mm -hmm. thing. Carrots are tough. Mm -hmm. Okay? Shh, look, look, look what I'm doing. I've got this here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this, this is using your weight. Mm -hmm. This is another way of being harmonious with gravity. You're using your weight to put energy into whatever you're mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? I think 
think so. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot to get. Yeah, There's well, so many we'll, pieces to put together. We'll review it in just mm -hmm. a minute. I think we're almost done landing mm -hmm. more. Or, no. But I just want to say that, you know, we had a, um, we were trying to change our water filter. Mm -hmm. And it's very tough to get it off. Yeah, yeah. And Clay's a big, strong man. This yeah. is, it's okay. But he couldn't get it. And then I came over here and I went, <laughs> and it went, okay, because I was using, using my weight and he was trying to use his muscle without his weight. Mm -hmm. So even little people can be much stronger <laughs> with weight use. So just play with that a little bit. Like imagine that you're cutting a vegetable and you just have your weight forward into it. Yeah. Or scrubbing a pan, mm -hmm. um, kitchen stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Does that, how are you doing with all that? Good. I think you got that idea that when you're standing and working, if you keep this rocker going, mm -hmm. it supports everything mm -hmm. you do. So now I want to just review from one on. So we started lying down, mm -hmm. just feeling your breath in your back as we did before, and then working with the arm lift. Mm -hmm. Scapula dropping. Mm -hmm. Swinging up, finding balance point, it works better lying down. Yeah. But just to, yeah. finding balance point, micro movements for the hand, mm -hmm. and letting it just drop, mm -hmm. feeling when gravity yeah. takes it. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked then also about taking a moment of consciousness when you initiate movement. Mm -hmm. So you don't just ram in in your mm -hmm. familiar way, <laughs> but you go, oh, I'm going to do this more easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we did both arms up. Mm -hmm. And usually I teach it one arm at a time because then it's a little less confusing. Mm -hmm. But for practicing, mm -hmm. both arms. Mm -hmm. And I would say practice this, you know, mm -hmm. and this will yeah. help your shoulders rest yeah. back and, and it will also help soften your hands because mm -hmm. you're working with your fingers so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we came to sitting mm -hmm. and we've started out just awareness of breathing in the back. And then <clears throat> we worked with what I call arcing, where you're curving, yeah. C-curve. And you see what happens, if I give you a side view here. Um, if this happens with so many people. Their pelvis is way under here, and then they're watching television this way, yeah, yeah. like a too soft couch. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. So what's happening is, here's congruence. This is where the body wants to go when the pelvis mm -hmm. is this way, and then you're creating mm -hmm. conflict. So in order to see in front of you, you get yourself. Mm -hmm. So we played with going into the arch mm -hmm. and going into the curve. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna say for you, stretch yourself in the arch. Mm -hmm. And that might be a nice, you know, when you, mm -hmm. you're taking a moment to yeah. refresh and think, take yeah. some breath, just mm -hmm. stretch into that, mm -hmm. that will help you open this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we came to finding the midsection mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah. That's all clear now? Yeah. Okay. And then we looked with finding balance point using mm -hmm. this hinge as a, mm -hmm. as the uh, place of rotation. So basically there's two hinges, this one and this one, mm -hmm. that we want to use. So that's where the head bone lifts off the neck. And, and so when you're doing your, you know, this happens. This moves and this moves at the same time so that you don't have this, which is stressful. <laughs> so all of this, if you really get into practicing, it will make your time at the computer less tiring for your body, mm -hmm. I guarantee. Mm -hmm. But it may, and, and as I say, it will take time. Yeah. So you be very patient with yourself, never, mm -hmm. no blame, no shame, never. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we, <clears throat> we worked with rocking and head response, just mm -hmm. feeling that, and also, one foot forward, one foot back. Mm -hmm. So really important that you have good connection to the floor with your mm -hmm. feet when you're sitting mm -hmm. so that you have support for leaning. You're, when you're at the computer, you're going to be a little forward or vertical. Mm -hmm. But this is going to hold you, this foot. Mm -hmm. And then we played with yeah, being sure that the elbows are by your sides mm -hmm. and not up here. The minute you go out here, you're going to go into that pattern again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So get your chair close and we mm -hmm. talked about the height of the chair being a little bit higher at the hip mm -hmm. than the, yeah. because if it's lower you, you're tending to go yeah. here again yeah. okay and then 
we did a little work with reaching mm -hmm. and taking your heart where your mm -hmm. hand goes. So if you're reaching something up, go here. If you're reaching down, go here. Mm -hmm. Take your heart where your hand goes. And that unless we have to extend ourselves literally physically, mm -hmm. we keep this shoulder blade on mm -hmm. the back at all times. Mm -hmm. And then if I have to, mm -hmm. you know, or I can't even, there's that last mm -hmm. extension. So it's there, but you don't need to use it unless you really need to use it. Yeah. Okay. okay. How are you doing there? Is that all coming in? Yeah. Okay. And then we talked a little bit standing mm -hmm. about working at your desk and having a little, a little bit of a rocker. Stepping over here, supporting where you're going. Mm -hmm. So you're not mm -hmm. throwing parts of yourself out right. unsupported. Right. And that's true in the kitchen too. Yeah. And you put something in the dish drainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something in this drawer. Yeah. Okay. I think that's okay. our lesson. What I'd love to do is come to your office and mm -hmm. help you there. But really recommend that you get yourself an auxiliary keyboard. I think you can a place you can plug one in. Yeah, well I you, I do my computer all over the house, so Yeah. That's a little more complicated, but mm -hmm. I could figure it out. But at least in one place. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's it then for today.